Good morning. Well, <laughs> I was thinking about the lottery this morning. I live in a small town in Massachusetts, a few thousand people. And I was thinking, how many places are there, stores, in this town that sell lottery tickets? I don't know, but quite a few. Probably more than a dozen. Maybe two dozen. I don't know, but... And then I thought about it. I said, you know what? Who does the lottery benefit? Who benefits from the lottery? I see these lottery tickets laying around on the ground. People just throw them down. I suppose they're disgusted that they didn't win. But the only way you win the lottery is if you don't play. It's a waste. It's worshipping money. It's evil. It's saying only money matters. I don't care how I get it. It's just that I gotta get money. And I can't get a job, so I'm gonna play the lottery and hopefully I'll win it big and I'll have lots of money and everything's gonna be wonderful. But you know what would be much better? is if there were jobs for people. Little jobs. Five hours, eight hours, one day jobs. Help somebody clean out their garage or their basement. Earn forty or fifty dollars. And spend it in your local economy. Not buying lottery tickets. Where's the money go when you buy the lottery tickets? Somewhere else. <clears throat> you know. It's a scam. It's a money scam. Lottery is a money scam. And the biggest part about lottery that people kind of miss is that you spend your conscious energy thinking about what? Money. Thinking money is a solution. Money is what I need. I need money so I'll play the lottery. This is pathetic. Where are the religious leaders, the spiritual leaders, speaking out against the lottery? The lottery is not a good idea. It's a scam. It's designed so that if you play it enough, you will lose. That's the truth. If you play it enough, you will lose. And usually, it doesn't take long for you to lose. Lose your faith in humanity. Lose your faith in your community. Lose your faith in yourself to make a better world. And now putting your faith in the lottery. In money. You've got to lose if you put your faith in money. It's a losing proposition. It would be much better if we could give people jobs, even if only for a small amount of time doing something that actually needed to be done. Now what needs to be done? Well, in the big picture we need to consume less, share more. That's the big picture. Why do I say that? Because the earth is dying from pollution. What do you think global warming is? It's a symptom of global pollution. And there are many causes of global warming besides carbon dioxide. In fact, that's not the big one. The big one is water vapor. Where do you get water vapor from? Well, if you've ever looked at the blacktop of a, of a road in a summer day or a parking lot, you see the water vapor coming off of it. That goes into the atmosphere and it's a global warming gas. It's part of the problem. Before we had the parking lot or the road, we had grass. And the rain came down and went into the grass and into the ground and stayed there for a while. That's less water vapor in the atmosphere. That's less global warming. And we never talk about it. We're always talking about carbon dioxide, which is probably very small part of global warming in the big picture. 
And there are other chemicals that are far worse than carbon dioxide in terms of global warming. Some of them do a lot more damage to the atmosphere than carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide is a natural component of the atmosphere. So there's going to always be a debate and a controversy over how much carbon dioxide is enough, how much is too much. People say 350, 400 parts per million, whatever. We pass 400 parts per million now. There's still civilization. But yes, we do have severe weather effects, and it probably is related to global warming and carbon dioxide and water vapor and other chemicals in the air. But we only talk about carbon dioxide. That's kind of narrowing our focus on the, probably the least dangerous substance that we put into the atmosphere outside of water vapor. Least dangerous chemical. We need to do lots of things to consume less and share more. That's why I mentioned hiring somebody to clean out your garage or your basement. Because that's something you can do to consume less and share more. When you do that, you'll probably find a lot of things that you really don't need anymore. And you could either sell them or give them to Salvation Army or just give them to somebody. Freecycle.org anything you want to do with them but don't hang on to stuff you don't need get rid of it give it away if it's usable sell it whatever you want to do with it but the point is consume less and share more and even if you charge for it you're still sharing it right and whoever gets it they don't have to go out and buy a new one at Walmart creating more pollution. The big problem is global pollution. And if you go behind that problem, what you see is overconsumption, that we're consuming too much. We're hooked on money and the idea that if we need something, we have to have money, we have to go buy it. Maybe not. Maybe somebody will give it to you if they clean out their basement. You hear me? But money doesn't work. It's like, well, there's no money to clean out my basement. Why not? If you gave somebody $50 to help you clean out your basement some Saturday, maybe a young person, a teenager, doesn't have a job, they'd have $50 to spend in the local economy. Hopefully they wouldn't buy lottery tickets. And that would create a job for somebody else conceivably a piece of a job, $50 of a job for somebody else. That's good for the local economy. If you go out and buy a new thing from Walmart, that money goes somewhere else. Right? We need to localize our economy. We need to recycle, reuse, and reduce our consumption. We know this. And we need to think about the needs of others when we spend money. It isn't just about, what do I want? I want more money, so I'm going to spend money on lottery tickets. That's a very selfish, greedy attitude. It's not a virtuous one. Think about how you can help somebody else by spending your money in a wise way. And if you hire somebody for five hours, you're creating a little bit of income for that person who probably has none or very little income. And there are loads of people who have no income. The unemployment rate is much higher than six or seven percent. It's probably more like twenty or thirty percent. When you think about all the people who would be willing to do a job if they were offered one, even if it was only a day job and for one day's work for fifty dollars or something, they'd do it and you'd be helping them and you'd be helping your local community and you'd be consuming less and reducing global pollution everything works now where is the advertisement for this message well this is it you're looking at it I'm the advertisement why am I doing this advertisement it's not like I thought of this and nobody else did lots of people have thought of this 
Where is all of the money for the advertising to get us to consume less and share more? Where's the money? Why isn't this a public service message on television five times a day? Ten times a day? Why is it that we think it's better to sell people stuff they don't need, won't use, and will throw away? That's not a better use of resources. We're not using our public airwaves intelligently. They should be used to get us to do the things that need to be done, rather than waste our mind on things that are unhelpful. So please think about it. What can you do to consume less and share more? And if there was an easy way for you to hire a young person for a day to help you clean out your garage or your basement, would you do it? Contact me. Steve at stevemoyer.us Or on Facebook, Metamind. M-E-T-A-M-I-N-D. Facebook.com, Metamind. Slash Metamind. Okay? Thanks. Have a good day.